Hasn't been at his best since the start of the season. Messi shoots. Oh my god, what a goal from Leo Messi. Did I just say he hasn't been at his best? I think I did. And he's proved me wrong in like two seconds. Kevin De Bruyne turns his man. Still De Bruyne. De Bruyne shoots. Oh my god, we've scored two absolute golazos in 15 minutes against Malaga. Hey guys, how is it going? It is S2G and welcome back to another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series. The previous episode was a bit of a mixed one as Arsenal triggered PK's release clause, which means PK will be joining Arsenal at the start of the January transfer window. Besides that, we lost our first league game of the season as well, so yeah, it didn't go down pretty well. In today's episode, Champions League action begins, more league games. If you guys are excited for this episode, make sure to drop a like on this one. 600 likes would be incredible and make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 18 content. As you guys know, these Barcelona episodes are sponsored by the awesome guys at OneFootball, so make sure to download their app. The link to their app will be down in the description. It's a really useful app which will help you keep up to date with all the football stuff going on in real life. You guys can check out all the stats, you guys can check out news pertaining to your team, the top scorer stats and all. And this one's a pretty cool stat, Lionel Messi, top scorer of La Liga. This app also gives you live score updates, so it's a pretty useful app all in all. So if you're interested in a football app that will help make your life easier, make sure to download the One Football app using the link down in the description below. Moving on, I'm just showing you guys all the transfer business we've conducted in this window. Kevin De Bruyne was an incoming signing. We sold Munir to Southampton. We sold Rafinha to Bayern Munich after they activated his release laws. And now PK to Arsenal. We also brought in Lafont. And yeah, so all in all, I think we've made some good business, but I think we still need to make a few more improvements here and there. Maybe signing Anthony Martial and now maybe replacing PK because he's definitely going. So we'll discuss that after our first game. For now, let's have a look at the games we've got today. Porto in the Champions League, which means Champions League football is back and I'm super hyped for that. Sevilla, which is going to be a tough game in La Liga, and the fact that we drop points against Granada, we can't make a mistake against uh, against them. We've also got Rayo Vallecano, and I'm going to be trying out something different in this episode. I'll talk about that later, but next episode is going to be so hyped. We've got Real Madrid, the first El Clasico of the season. Anyways, this is how our Champions League group stage table looks for those who haven't had a look at it. We've got Chelsea, Porto and Basel. It's a very interesting group, but... This means that we need to get points against Porto and Basel because we know Chelsea are going to do well. So yeah, let's hope we can win our first Champions League game of the season. Player of the episode, no surprises at all. Leo Messi wins the vote. Legit guys, he doesn't need to do anything to win the vote, man. If I just put his name and he hasn't even played a game, you guys will still vote for him. But anyways, he deserved this one. Scored a few fantastic goals. And yeah, got an assist as well, so deservedly so, he is your informed player of the episode. Now this one's a very interesting question in the press conference. Recently there are rumours that Real Madrid are going to sign Neymar, because they think he's the ideal replacement for Ronaldo. Will you try to buy him back or let him go to your biggest rivals? Now this thing, I'm going to let you guys decide. Do you guys want to see Neymar back at Barcelona? I'm not sure he'll join Real Madrid in this series, but do you guys want to see Neymar back at Barcelona at some point in the series? Make sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Maybe next season we can do that. I wouldn't mind doing that because even though Neymar, the way he left was uh, kind of annoying, but he's still a fantastic player. Anyways, moving on to our second question. Have you thought of changing the lineup as false nine hasn't been working out? And this was the big change I was talking about. I am going to be experimenting in this episode with a three at the back formation. I just think it is an effective formation that can help us attack a lot more. Maybe defensively it will cost us, but regardless, we still concede a few goals here and there. So, might as well try out the three at the back formation. We're going to give it a go against Porto in the Champions League. Let's just hope it works out well. And that is the end for today's press conference questions. If you guys have any more press conference questions, make sure to let me know down in the comment section. Champions League football is back and today we're going to be playing our first Champions League game of the season against Porto. We've got a very difficult group, I'd say. The likes of Basel, Porto and Chelsea could all cause us problems, especially Chelsea. So we've got to try and beat Porto no matter what. It's at home, so hopefully we can pick up three points. Lately, our form has been a bit disappointing, losing our first La Liga game and not winning convincingly against Osasuna. So... Let's hope that will change and to, you know, make that change happen. I'm trying out a different formation, a three at the back formation. Now, 
I wasn't going to do it against a team like Porto because they're a good team and they can hit us on the counter. But I thought the only way we can test out this formation is against the quality side. So let's just do that. And I'm going to be making a few changes to the lineup like Dolberg coming in for Antoine Griezmann because of fitness reasons. And Grimaldo playing as a left winger or slash left midfielder because Jordi Alba isn't fully fit. I've already explained what my aim is with this formation. Let's just see how it plays. Also, this is the first time Dolberg and Messi are playing together. Let's see how they perform. It's a strong team. Let's get the job done. Alright, three at the back formation. Let's see what this gives us in this game. Grimaldo. Inside into Thiago. Dolberg. Thiago again. Dolberg again. Oh, Messi's through. Messi with the shot and Messi with the goal. That, that I think it was a lucky goal because the defender just somehow fell down in that instance. Who cares, man? Three at the back formation for the win. Messi scores our first Champions League goal of the season. I want to have a look at that. How did that defender fall on? Messi kind of tripped him there. Should have been called a foul in my opinion. But we've taken the lead in controversial circumstances. But so far, three at the back formation doing well for me. Here's Busquets. Too slow on the ball in that instance. And this is where things could get interesting. Big chance for Abubakar to stay in with this save. As I said, on the counter-attack, we could struggle with this formation. We just don't have enough people at the back. And again, another chance here for Porto. This time, Abubakar trying to cross it in. Luckily, Ter Stegen collects. Finds Kasper Dolberg. Now, Usman Dembele. Dembele does well. Plays it inside into Grimaldo, who scored. Both our wingers combining to get us the second goal in this one. Three at the back formation working so well for us against Porto. Maybe because it's at home and Porto aren't really trying to attack, who knows. But that fake shot from Usman Dembele literally sent the entire defence away. Brilliant stuff from Dembele. And Grimaldo, easy job for him. Good finish there. So far, so good. 2-0 up in our first Champions League game of the season. Here goes Grimaldo. He's gotten in behind the Porto defence. Gets the shot off and he scores. Grimaldo with a brace against Porto. Grimaldo. Plays it inside into Usman. Dembele tries to get the shot off. Ball falls to Alenia who shoots. Oh, that would have been a fantastic goal from the youngster. Haven't spoken about him yet. I've given him a start because a lot of our midfielders aren't fully fit. The likes of KDB. Hence, maybe I thought, you know what? Let's just give Alenia the go. And so far, he hasn't disappointed. Alenia over the top through ball into Grimaldo again. He's having a fantastic game. He's going to whip this one into Usman Dembele. That was a beautiful cross from Grimaldo, but... Dembele just couldn't get down. That is the first half coming to an end. And what a half we've had. 3-0 up against a good team like Porto in the Champions League. Grimaldo so far man of the match. He's been phenomenal in this half. I might actually revert back to the 4-3-3 false 9 just to get some control. Because, yeah, we were conceding a few chances here and there on the counter. I'm switching back to the 4-3-3 false 9 for this second half. The game is pretty much done. I don't want to be conceding stupid goals. So we're going to go back to the false 9 formation. I've brought off Leo Messi and even, I believe, Umtiti just to keep them fully fit for that severe game. Besides that, Messi, why do we need him now? We're already 3 0 our best to reserve or, you know, keep him fully fit for the upcoming game. So we're going to use this lineup or this team for the second half. Let's hope we can add to our three goal tally. Now Sergio Busquets. Alenia into Thiago. This is some great build-up play. Kasper Dolberg. Thiago again. Thiago finesse shot. It falls to Dolberg who scores. Apologies for my phone there again. But anyways, Dolberg scores our fourth of this game. Good goal there from him. The build-up play was pretty good until, of course, Delafo ruined it with that poor finish. The ball fell kindly to Dolberg and he put it into the back of the net with ease. I think Dolberg is going to have a really important season for us because if we do revert to a... A three at the back formation. He's going to get a lot more game time. So he's going to gonna have to do this on a regular basis. I think he'll be able to do that because he's a quality player. 4-0 up in this game against Porto. Oh god. Ball played in behind our defense into Suarez. Who gets the shot off and he hits the side netting. That was literally Porto's first, you know, probably second real chance in this game. And they missed. Usman Dembele cuts inside. Takes it out. Cuts inside again. Still Dembele gets it on his left foot. Oh, so close from Dembele. I wanted to shoot that with his right foot. But instead he decided to go with his left. I don't know why. But good opportunity again for him. He should have scored from that. There you have it. One of our best performances in this entire series so far. And this wasn't down to individual brilliance. It was purely 
down to the tactical changes we made. I think that's the reason we've won this game. And I think that's the first time we've done such a thing in this series. I mean, the five at the back, not the five at the back, the three at the back formation we used at the start just was too much for Porto. We were overwhelming in terms of our attackers going forward. We had the two strikers who were getting the job done. We had the two wingers who were also getting in behind so well. And the midfield were just passing the ball to them at every opportunity they got. It was just working so well. Also credited the defence and the goalkeeper. They got the job done as well. So super impressed with the three at the back formation. We changed the false nine in the second half to get more control. And that worked well as well. So super happy with our performance. Now we turn our focus to La Liga. Super impressed with the way the three at the back formation works. And anyways, we'll talk about that later. For now, the centre-back problems. As you guys know, PK's release clause was triggered by Arsenal. And he will be joining Arsenal for about £60 million. Now, I got a bit of hate in the comments section for getting rid of PK. But I didn't get rid of PK. He himself accepted the contract with Arsenal. And when we signed PK and we gave him the new contract, he wanted that release clause. And I didn't expect any club to pay that amount for PK. Mistakes were made, but now we can't really do much. We will be eventually either signing a new centre-back or as some of you guys suggested, just trusting in Laporte and using him as our primary centre-back alongside Umtiti. But the thing is, if we do eventually decide to use the three at the back formation a lot more often, we will definitely be needing to bring in another centre-back. What are your opinions on this, guys? Would love to know in the comment section. We've got a transfer for you from, for, from Everton for Paulinho. I'm just going to accept it. I just want to get rid of him because I don't see him as a player for the future and even for the present. So we'll get rid of him. But he's, he, does, he just doesn't accept contracts with other clubs. I don't know why. Hopefully he will do so. We've got La Liga action now against Sevilla. Let's get into this one. Going with the three at the back formation against a team as good as Sevilla may prove to be a very risky decision. But the way we performed in that first half against Porto just gives me confidence to go with this three at the back formation again. Let's hope things work out well for us. I'm probably again going to switch back to the 4-3-3 false 9 at half time just to give us a bit more control. It did do that in the game against Porto. In the second half, we had more of the ball. So, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Hopefully, we can pick up a few goals in the first half itself. And this is the team that I'm going for. De Bruyne, Goretzka and Thiago in midfield. I'm benching Busquets for this one because he didn't really have the best of games against uh, Porto so yeah it's a strong team that we've got here Griezmann comes back into the lineup as well our defense is looking solid I'm just worried about being hit on the counter attack but if we score more goals than them that shouldn't be a problem as we have drop points in La Liga already we can't afford to do the same again let's jump into this one and get all three points making a slight change to the team I'm playing De Bruyne in cam instead of Thiago because I think De Bruyne as a cam is much better than Thiago as a cam, so Thiago will slot in midfield. Messi. Over the top, through ball into Leo Messi. Can he get ahead of the defenders? Yes, he can. But the touch was so bad from Leo Messi. You'd expect more from someone as good as Messi, man. That's disappointing. Oh, this is what I was worried about. Jesus Navas using that pace. Umtiti does so well there. Ter Stegen playing with fire. Luckily, he clears that one out. That was actually good defending if you look at it that way. Long ball approach from Sevilla. Didn't work out well for them. Now Leo Messi holds up the ball well. Gets the finesse shots off and Messi has scored a phenomenal goal against Sevilla. The presence of mind to you know, take the ball back was brilliant from Messi. And then the finesse shot. Top bins from Leo Messi. We make it 1-0 against Sevilla. It was Sevilla's fault to give the ball away first. I mean, Goretzka's header was brilliant to you know, win the ball back. And then Messi doing what he does best. Putting the ball into the back of the net. That's poor defending from me. Ben Yedder's through. He plays a pass inside into Ganso. And this is what I feared. We are going to concede goals using the three at the back formation. And this time Ganso makes us pay for it. It is 1-0 against Sevilla right now. And I'm tempted to revert back to the 4-3-3 false nine. I think the three at the back formation should only be used against small teams. So let's not try to do this again. Let's not use this formation against the likes of Sevilla, Real Madrid, etc, etc. Alright, I've switched formations for this second half back to the 4-3-3 false 9 to give us more control in midfield and even on defence. Semedo comes on for Laporte because I'm not using Laporte as my right back. So, Semedo and Alba are going to be our full backs. So, the team looks solid as always. Let's try and get all three points against Sevilla. Ben Yedda in a dangerous position. PK puts in a great last ditch challenge or else we could be 2-1 down. We might have a chance to counter. Here's Griezmann. Messi. Back into Antoine Griezmann. 
does so well there. Here goes Antoine Griezmann. Into Thiago Alcantara. This is our chance to score. Inside. Oh my god. And Zonzi. What an interception from him. I should have passed it into Griezmann. But there was way too much power in that pass. So annoying. Vasquez comes on for Ganso to make it even worse for us. All right, we've got ourselves a corner. Thiago puts this one in. Griezmann with the header. Let's go. We've made it 2-1. And it's taken us a bit of luck to get into this position. The corner from Thiago is perfect. And the header from Antoine Griezmann was brilliant as well. We make it 2-1 against Sevilla. Let's have a look at that header again. Sevilla will be so disappointed with themselves for conceding a goal from a set piece against Barcelona. We haven't done this in a long time, you know, scoring from a corner. But I'm glad that we've scored. Goretzka. Now we've got a great chance on the counter-attack. Here goes Usman Dembele. He's now one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Usman Dembele should score this. And he does. I believe this is his first goal in La Liga this season. And it's come in style. What a counter-attack that was. Thiago assisting him again. And Dembele providing the finishing touch with a fantastic driven finesse shot. We make it 3-1. Great goal from Usman Dembele, showcasing his pace in that instance. No chance for the keeper there. Here we go on another counter-attack. Thiago with a brilliant pass into Usman Dembele. Similar scenario for Dembele to score. And he's done it again. Usman Dembele with a brace against Sevilla. And now surely this game is done and dusted. That pass from Thiago with the outside of his right boot was absolutely phenomenal. And then Dembele does what he does best. Runs down the channel and gets us the goal. Good goal there from Usman Dembele. Well, not the most convincing of performances, even though the scoreline suggests otherwise. You know, 4-1 against Sevilla is a respectable score, but most of our goals came towards the end of the game. We couldn't assert the dominance we had against Porto against Sevilla, so... Kind of disappointed with that, but not disappointed with the scoreline at all. We get three points against Sevilla. Guess that's exactly what matters. The switch to the 4-3-3 false 9 definitely helped us against Sevilla. Maybe against big teams I'm going to go with the false 9. And against the smaller sides I'm going to choose the 3 at the back formation. I think that's the dynamic we're going to have. Anyways, right now we are 4th in La Liga with a chance to go top of the league if we do beat Rai Vallecano. I'm interested in that. So let's jump into this one against Rayo. Away from home and hopefully pick up all 3 points. Before the Classico, we've got ourselves an important game against Rayo. And why this game is important? Well, it gives us the chance to go top of La Liga. So if we win this game, we will be league leaders unless Real Betis also manage to win. Which is also a high possibility considering the start they've had this season. But before that El Clasico, I want to put pressure on Madrid. So let's hope we can beat Rayo Vallecano. I'm going with the three at the back formation because I think this is the perfect game to see how the three at the back formation would be... Uh, fairing for us so let's jump into this one it's a very different lineup and a lot of plays playing out of position so i'm not sure how it's going to work out but let's just hope for the best and pick up all three points rayo with the first opportunity of this game that's good defending but the ball just fell back to cartagena thankfully his shot wasn't good enough or else we would be one nil down this is where the danger lies on the counter attack that's a terrific counter attack and a big chance for rayo and they've missed we've struggled so far in the early 13 minutes We've got to improve, man. Ball played in behind into Grimaldo. Another chance for Grimaldo to score. And he's dragged his shot wide. That was the opportunity to take the lead. Poor finishing from Grimaldo, but you can't really blame him. Finishing isn't really his best part of his game, man. Now Dahlberg finds Dennis Suarez, who's got the pace to get ahead of the defenders. Dennis Suarez with the shot, and he's skied it. Uh, that's poor finishing. We've had a couple of good chances in like the previous eight minutes. We should have scored from at least one of them. Cross played in. The head is brilliant, but Testegen comes up big with a great save there. Man, this game's been a tough one for us. Maybe because we are using our second team. Andres Iniesta, Dolberg. Brilliantly done. Into Gerard Delafoe. Delafoe gets it on his right foot, and that is a brilliantly composed finish from Gerard Delafoe. Calm and composed, and he puts it into the back of the net. An assist for Denis Suarez there. And the way he got it onto his right foot and then finessed it was just brilliant. We finally take the lead against Rayo. Maybe it was undeserving, but to be fair, we've had the better chances in this game. Rayo Vallecano pressing a lot in these latter moments of this half. Big save from Ter Stegen. Ricardo Pereira then clears. De La Feu. Ball finds its way to Denis Suarez who shoots, but he drags his shot wide. You'd expect more from Denis Suarez. He's having a good game though. Got the assist for the first goal. Dolberg. Delafoe, 
into Justin Kloivert. I wanted to play that into Dolberg, but Kloivert does well there. It's still Kloivert, cuts this one back, and the keeper makes the save that I don't know what was the Raya Vallecano defense doing there, but oh my god, what is my defense doing? Ricardo Pereira just lets this guy get away, but he's too quick to be beaten there. Eventually good defending, but maybe not as Lassus got the ball back again. He does the scoop turn, plays this one inside, and it's Andres Iniesta who's had to clear the ball. And we give it away again. What is going on? Cross played in. That should be easy for Laporte. And we finally clear the ball. Into Dolberg, who's made a fantastic run. Dolberg with a driven shot. And how is the keeper kept that one out? Good tackle from Iniesta. Now Dolberg. Dolberg shoots. Big save from the opposition's keeper. Dolberg deserves a goal in this game, man. He's been superb. De La Faux. Dolberg. Back into Gerard De La Faux. Now Grimaldo. Takes it inside. Grimaldo cuts this one back. That was a great cross from Grimaldo, but no one was attacking the box in the perfect manner. Dolberg just went way too ahead of the six-yard box, but nevertheless, we are still leading 1-0. Dolberg gets the shots off, and that's a brilliant strike from Kasper Dolberg. That's what he gives you an ability to score from outside the box as well as inside the box, basically anywhere. That was a stunning strike from Kasper Dolberg. You know what? Credit where is due. You know, we were going to sell Dolberg when he wasn't performing for us. Like his first 10 games for us, he didn't score a single goal. But after that, he's just picked up form and he's never looked back since. What a goal there from Kasper Dolberg. Gets us the three points. Oh, you know what, to be fair, it took a nasty deflection there. But nevertheless, it's going to go down as Dolberg's goal. Well, there you have it. We've picked up all three points against Raivai Kano. It was a tough game because they did perform well and this was our second team going head on with them. But nevertheless, we've won this game. Three points in the bag. Let's have a look at the league table and see where we are standing. Are we top of the league? Well, pretty happy with the way things have gone so far in this episode. Three games played, three wins. So that's pretty awesome. Before having a look at the league table, have a look at this. Thiago is concerned about his game time and about him not being first choice. Well, he shouldn't have any concerns. He is my first choice player in that either cam role or in that centre midfield role. I really enjoy him and today again he put in a great performance getting three assists in one game itself. That is absolutely fantastic. He is one of the best players in my team right now so super happy about that. Looking at the league table, well we are second in La Liga with Real Betis of all teams being first. Real Sociedad in second place. Real Madrid in 4th place, we've got an El Clasico coming up next, so they've got a chance to make up some ground, we aren't going to allow that guys, we definitely aren't, we're going to try and do our best to get a victory. Uh, in the top scorers in La Liga, Leo Messi is in there in 3rd place with 3 goals, in assists we have got Messi as well with a couple of assists, the same with Goretzka and Thiago, our top assist of the season in La Liga with 3 assists. So next episode, Real Madrid, Basel and Real Sociedad. We've got some very difficult La Liga games coming up, all against top sides like Sociedad, Betis who are league leaders and even Atletico Madrid. Most importantly, next episode we'll have a look at the a squad report or you know the squad hub and see how our players are doing in terms of growth. And also we'll still discuss more transfers, the likes of De Ligt or Anthony Martial, who should we bring in. I might actually just go ahead and sign De Ligt in the next episode if you guys want me to do so because we can make transfers during the transfer window which is a massive feature EA have implemented in career mode. About Anthony Martial, the plan is to sign him on a pre-contract. And again, talking about centre-backs, if we do decide to switch to the three at the back formation, which seems highly likely because I'm enjoying this formation. Against Raiva Icano, it was brilliant, so we might end up signing another centre-back. Regardless, time for you guys to vote for your informed player of the episode. First nominee, Grimaldo, who was fabulous in this episode. Your second nominee, Thiago, who again was brilliant. Make sure to vote by clicking the i button on the top right of your screen. That is it for this video. Make sure to download the OneFootball app. Links will be in the description. Follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the channel. Drop a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new around here. And I will see you guys soon for another episode of this series.